In this video, we'll be talking through what you can build with the ThirdWeb SDK, how it fits into your development workflow, and what problems it currently solves within the Web3 space. Hey everyone, I'm Jared, a developer relations engineer at ThirdWeb, and at ThirdWeb, we're focused on helping you build out Web3 apps easily. One of the many tools that we provide to help you do that is the ThirdWeb SDK, which sits at the middle layer of your full stack Web3 development workflow. You've already deployed your contract, whether that be using ThirdWeb's tools or any other tools in the Web3 ecosystem, and now you're ready to start building applications that interact with that smart contract. Before we jump into the video, I want to let you know that currently 70% of of the amazing people like yourself that watch ThirdWeb's YouTube videos are still not subscribed to the channel. So before we begin, I'd love to ask you a favor. If you get any value out of these videos, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the ThirdWeb channel. And a little tip is we're going to be airdropping 10 users who have subscribed to the ThirdWeb channel, a very special NFT every week. Once you've deployed your smart contract and you're ready to start building on top of it, you can bring in your smart contract using the SDK with just one line of code. From there, you can use any of our supported languages, including JavaScript, React, Go, or Python to call any of the functionality that you wrote on that smart contract. When you build a Web3 application, there's normally a number of complex topics that you have to deal with, especially if you're new to the Web3 space. Things like setting up an RPC URL to communicate with the blockchain or setting up IPFS and a pinning service behind the scenes to make sure your off-chain data doesn't disappear. In addition to that, building a performant application that your users have a great experience with is not such an easy feat, especially when you're considering advanced topics like caching, retrying failed queries from the blockchain, and managing the connected wallet state across your application, it can become quite difficult to manage over time. One way that I like to describe the SDK is a layer above all of those fundamentals that you would expect of a decentralized application bundled together into one easy to use interface without sacrificing any of the ownership. You get things like the ability to connect wallets to your website, read and write transactions to the blockchain directly, read information from off-chain storage, as well as display all of this information to the UI using easy to use components. My personal favorite feature is the ability to unlock functionality in the SDK based on what you write in your smart contract. For example, if you wrote an NFT collection that implements the total supply function that shows the number of NFTs that have been minted so far, you then unlock the get all function inside the SDK, which does awesome things behind the scenes for you. It will fetch all of your NFT metadata from off-chain storage like IPFS, as well as the current wallet address that owns each of the tokens. If you're using the React SDK, it will also cache those results so that when you make that query again, all of that information will come back really quickly. So how about I show you how to connect to your smart contract using the SDK, call some of the functions using my favorite feature, as well as showcase some of the UI components that are available to you. Let's get into it. So as you can see here, I have a very basic ERC721 NFT collection contract using one of the base contracts provided by ThirdWeb. If I go to the CLI and run the npx ThirdWeb detect command, this is going to tell us all of the successfully implemented extensions that we have, which will unlock functionality for us inside the SDK. For example, we've implemented the ERC721 standard the supply and mintable extensions, which will allow us to use the get all functionality as well as the mint functionality in the SDK. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that now. To create a new application with ThirdWeb, React, and JavaScript SDKs installed, you can run the npx ThirdWeb create dash dash app command. This will set you up with a simple project like this one. We have an index.jsx page with a connect wallet button, as well as an app.js page that defines the network you want your users to utilize and the network your smart contracts are deployed to, as well as wrap your application in the ThirdWeb provider. So on the index.js page, let's import all of the functionality that we're going to utilize. We have a connect wallet button, a web3 button, and a couple of hooks that we're going to use. The first one is the use contract hook, which will use to get an instance of our contract, which will allow us to utilize 
any of the functionality that we wrote in Solidity inside of our application. So all we need to do is write this one line of code and paste in our contract address, and we have our contract available to utilize inside our application. Beneath that, we're going to use two of the hooks that are available because of the extensions that we've implemented. One of them is called the use NFTs. And as you'd imagine, this fetches all of the metadata for each of the NFTs as I was describing earlier. So we can deconstruct the data field and rename it as something more meaningful like NFTs and pass the whole contract into this hook to get all of the NFTs from the collection. We also get utility flags like the is loading flag or the is error flag that we can show different states on the UI depending on the state of this query. Beneath this use NFTs hook, we'll use the use mint NFT hook to mint a new NFT on behalf of the connected wallet into this collection. Again, we're deconstructing the mutate and renaming that to the mint NFT function and then passing the whole contract in to this hook to allow us to mint an NFT onto that contract. So as I said, depending on the state of the query, we can show different states on the UI. For example, we can show an error state that says something went wrong if there is an error fetching the NFTs from the collection. Beneath that, we'll return the default state where the data is not errored out and has come back from our contract. Beneath that, we'll show all of the NFTs in the collection as well as a mint button. So let's do that now. We'll return a div that says my NFTs Beneath that, we'll iterate over each of the NFTs. But first, we'll utilize that is loading flag to display a loading indicator to represent that that data is still coming back from the blockchain query. Once that data has come back, we can render each of the NFTs and convert that into a third web NFT media component. So all we're doing here is iterating over each of the NFTs in that NFTs array, converting it into the third web NFT media, which accepts the NFT metadata here, and that converts it into a renderable component on the UI where the image or the video or the audio asset that is in the NFT is rendered on the UI and shown to the user. We're also rendering the simple name of the NFT beneath that image. So that gives us a simple gallery of all of the NFTs in the collection. Now let's see how we can use the UI component called the Web3 button to mint an NFT into this contract. Beneath this gallery here, we'll have a Web3 button that has the text Mint NFT. We need to pass two things into this Web3 button. The first one is the actual contract address. The second one is the action you want to call when this button gets clicked. And within that action, we can actually access the contract directly. We can call things like contract.erc721 since we implemented that in our smart contract. Since we also implemented the mint functionality on the ERC721, we can access erc721.mint. And this allows us to simply provide an object where we can specify the metadata of this NFT. When we call this function, all that metadata is uploaded and handled and pinned in IPFS for us behind the scenes, so we don't have to worry about managing that manually. So within this, we can pass in the metadata of the NFT that we want to mint, like the name, the description, the image, which can be a file or a link as I'm doing here. If we open up the terminal and run the npm run dev command, we can open up our application at localhost 3000, where you can see we've rendered all of the NFTs from that collection and have the Web3 button state with an unconnected wallet. So if we connect our wallet using our MetaMask wallet here, we then see the mint NFT button. And this will allow us to mint a new NFT into the collection. Let's go ahead and click that now. This will ask us to accept a MetaMask transaction called Mint2. If we go ahead and accept that, the best part about this is the mutation that we've just made will update the query called use NFTs. So when this use NFTs hook detects that transaction has completed, the data will update automatically to show that new NFT. As we can see here on the UI, once this button action has complete, the new NFT gets minted and that button goes back to the state where it's ready to be pressed again. 
So you can already begin to see the power of the SDK with just how much we've implemented in our contract with only a few lines of code. And this is just the surface level of what the SDK is capable of. So if you wanna see more of what the SDK can do, check out our other videos as well as subscribe to the channel to see all of the latest features and more educational content for free, just like this one. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.